The top stories tonight in Y News. The driver of the SUV involved in the viral hit and run incident in Mandaluyong City finally surrenders to the police, issuing an apology to his victim. The Department of Health warned of a possible increase in severe and critical COVID-19 cases by August. Norway eyes introducing offshore wind energy to the Philippines. And a basin in Australia is seen to ease the global shortage of fertilizer. Good evening, Philippines and the world. We are now reporting live from Quezon City. And today is Wednesday, the 15th of June, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts. First in the news, the driver of the sports utility vehicle involved in the viral hit and run in Mandaluyong City finally surrendered to the police, accompanied by his parents and lawyer Jose Antonio San Vicente, explained his side on what happened on the scene. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. Two days after hearing the warning of National Police Officer in Charge Police Lieutenant General Vicente Deno Jr., the driver of the white sports utility vehicle in the viral ramming of a security guard in Mandaluyong City finally surrendered. Jose Antonio San Vicente appeared before a press briefing in Camp Crame with his parents and lawyer and explained why it took long for them to surrender. Kasi naglabas na si General Danao ng uh, yung sa news. Natakot na talaga ako. Then I said, gawin na natin. We have to go to General Danao already. At dyan na kami mag-surrender, ano, mag mag, mag magpakita. I, hindi na ako capable mag-isip na maayos. Eh. I, in, hindi, hindi po ba natural lang sa unang may ganyang kagrabing insidente. Abogado na tatawagin mo kasi hindi na clear yung mind ko kasi anak ko. Eh. So every time mag-move na ako, nagtatanong na ako sa abogado kasi natataranta na ako. Hindi na nga kami makakain. Ang takot ko, pag hindi na ako, pag hindi na kami uh, capable mag-isip, paano pa? Kasi hindi kami makakain, hindi kami makatulog. Kaya we need yung abogado. Yun po ang dahilan nun. The suspect's lawyer added his clients was confused and afraid. That is why he fled the scene after the incident. Nagkataon lang, Natakot siya, nagpanik siya. Kami naman, ang sinabi ko sa pamilya, kay uh, Joel at saka ang asawa niya, we do not condemn, condemn, condone the incident as reported on the viral uh, media. Kailangan magpakita si, si Anton ng personal para mapahayag niya ang totoong nangyari. At saka, mag-extend ng apology sa publiko. The San Vicente family also turned over the white SUV that was seen in the viral dashcam footage. PNP OIC Police Lieutenant General Vicente Danao Jr. said they will consider the case as closed and leave the decision to the court. We consider this case uh, solved, no? Uh, considering that we already filed the case and uh, yun pong ating uh, person of interest or the suspect uh, voluntarily gave up to clear matters at hand. So we are now leaving to the uh, prosecution's office, to the courts, on the uh, proper venue okay, to answer the matters at hand. So, sila na po ang uh, bahala dyan. And we do not want to uh, further uh, comment because it might prejudice the uh, results of the uh, matter at hand sa uh, court. Meanwhile, Jose Antonio San Vicente publicly apologized to his victim, Christian Joseph Loralde. 
wala naman akong masasabi na hindi naman masasabi ng uh, abogado ko kung hindi um, uh, may apologies sa uh, nangyari may apologies sa uh, kay Mr. Florel de at kanyang pamilya The suspect's family promised to shoulder the expenses of the victim. However, Floralde, in an interview with the program Ito Ang Balita, said he will not accept any help from the family. He is also determined to pursue the case against the suspect. Sa akin, tanggap ko naman po yung uh, pag-ingin niya ng kawan, uh, pero kailangan pa rin niya po harapin yung uh, kaso na nakasampong sa kanya po sa korte po. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Several senators react to President Rodrigo Duterte's apology on the Isabong operations in the Philippines. The chief executive apologized to the public after allowing the operations of the online gambling in the country. Rosa Licos reports why. Three senators welcomed the apology of President Rodrigo Duterte over his initial decision to allow the operations of Isabong or online cockfighting in the country. Outgoing Senate President Vicente Soto III said it is better late than never. Meanwhile, re-elected Senator Joel Villanueva appreciated the decision of the outgoing president to cease the operations of Isabong after realizing the ill effects of the online gambling. For Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, an ally of President Duterte, his apology is never too late. He thanked him for giving more weight on the social costs brought by the Isabong than the government's revenue. Yesterday, President Duterte expressed his apologies for his late realization of the ill effects of the online gambling. I'm sorry, I did not really realize that it would be like Akala ko kasi the moving factor there was na imberna kasi ako 640 million a month. Tapos so many billions a year because our marami na cooperate eh. Ngayon ang naano ko but uh, I realized very late and I am very sorry that it had to happen. Hindi ko akala eh na ganoon. It was last month when he decided to stop the Isabong operations after the findings of the interior and local government that it resulted in the deterioration of moral values. But before this, he initially defended it as it generated 640 million pesos amount of revenues per month. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Outgoing Department of Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara urges personalities associated with the government's National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, or ntf LCAC to stop red-tagging without sufficient evidence. He believes such act would endanger certain people. But if you don't have any evidence to support anything except to suspect that ito ay fronts, ng, let's say, communist terrorist groups. Ayaw ka nalang magsalita dahil you're endangering certain people. No? Guevara added, it would be better to file appropriate cases in court. This is also the DOJ's position instead of labeling certain groups or individuals. The Justice Chief also clarifies, red tagging is not a policy of the ntf LCAP. Meanwhile, a new batch of ambassadors have paid their courtesy visit to President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. Norway and South Africa expressed their willingness to help the Philippines' energy sources. Nel Maribuho tells us in this report. President-elect Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. and Norwegian Ambassador to the Philippines, John Jansen, discussed the development of renewable energy sources in the Philippines. Jansen said he mentioned to Marcos during his courtesy visit the offshore wind energy that could provide job opportunities for Filipinos. More companies and more investments will come in the coming years. Uh, offshore wind, floating solar, uh, and also hydro. However, the diplomat said this may need an adjustment in the country's current policies. 
Uh, the World Bank talks about up to 50,000 jobs, uh, good paying jobs uh, for Filipinos, if you are successful in developing this, this new sector. That will require some uh, adjustments and policies on the Filipino side. The South African envoy also paid the courtesy visit to the president-elect. The envoy said this country is ready to assist the Philippines when it comes to providing supply of oil and petroleum products. Angola is already being the biggest supplier in the Southern Africa. So what we said to the president-elect is that we, we are open to assist, to facilitate that. But what is important is that Angola has got more than 10,000 Filipinos working on the offshore. On Monday, Russia expressed the willingness to help the Philippines amid the increase in prices of oil products. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The National Capital Region or NCR as well as other provinces, highly urbanized cities, independent component cities and municipalities will remain under COVID-19 alert level 1 until the end of June. According to the Secretariat of the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases or IATF, 84 out of 121 provinces, highly urbanized cities and independent component cities are under the least strict COVID restriction as well as 161 of 758 other component cities and municipalities. Meanwhile, several areas in the country will be under alert level 2 until June 30. The Department of Health or DOH warned of a possible surge of severe and critical cases of COVID-19 in the country by August. Aiko Miguel explains why. Health spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosario Verjeres said COVID-19 hospital admissions may rise in the next two months. This is because of the waning immunity of the COVID-19 vaccines. There are also factors that could affect the rise of COVID-19 hospitalizations in the country. Uh, base po doon sa scenario kung saan uh, nakapasok ang mas transmissible na subvariants, uh, tayo ay nakapagbaba na no, nung may reduction ng minimum public health standards at saka uh, yung ating booster uptake is mananatiling ganito no, na ang uptake is just this much. Uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng pagtaas ng pagkakaospital uh, pagdating ng mga August of this year and uh, this would be around uh, 4,800 plus which is much more. No? Uh, mas mataas po ang hospitalization na projected na ito kaysa nung nagkaroon tayo noong uh, Delta variant. However, under Secretary Berhere said, these are just projections and are not cast in stone but can be used for the country's preparations and planning. Currently, the average daily cases in the Philippines is at 270 in two weeks' time and 170 average daily cases in NCR. Once the country's cases spike to 6,600 and NCR to 818 cases per day in two weeks, this will prompt them to escalate the alert level to two. Meanwhile, the country has recorded six new BA.5 and 10 BA.2.12.1 based on the result of genome sequencing last June 13. Two are from Metro Manila, one from Cagayan Valley, one from Western Visayas, and one from Northern Mindanao. Four were fully vaccinated. One is currently undergoing home isolation. Of the 10 BA.2.12.1, four are from Metro Manila, two are Calabarzon, one from Cagayan Valley, Bicol Region, and in Western Visayas. The DOH is investigating the travel history of the new Omicron subvariant cases. Under Secretary Verhera explained, the new recorded subvariants has nothing to do with the rising cases in the country. Muli po na isinawi ng Department of Health na hindi po directly related ang mga bahagyang pagtaas ng kaso sa pagpasok nitong bagong variant. Ay ko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Justice encourages local chief executives or local government units to submit any recommendations regarding the face mask mandate with the Interagency Task Force. Dante Amento tells us why. Just as Secretary to... Winardo Guevara stressed that the IATF is always open to listen to suggestions as long as they are backed with scientific evidence. 
Guevara made the clarification amid the ongoing issue on the executive order issued by Cebu Governor Gwen Garcia that allowed the optional use of face masks in well-ventilated and open spaces. Garcia's EO on the optional wearing of face masks is allegedly inconsistent with the rules of the national government through the IATF. It's a simple act of approaching the IATF and requesting a modification of the existing rule. And in mm -hmm. my experience, Marichu, napaka-reasonable mm -hmm. ng IATF sa mga, mga ganyang issues. Madaling mm -hmm. mag-adjust ang IATF. Kasi the IATF is coping up with changes in the environment, in developments in the control of the pandemic. So, ganun lang ang kailangan gawin eh. Huwag, huwag mo nang banggain diretso. The Justice Chief, however, urges local chief executives to approach the IATF if they want to modify the current IATF guidelines on face mask mandate. Ang kailangan lang naman gawin dyan ni Governor Gwen or ng any, ha, any local government official who feels na pwede nang mag-alis ng mask sa kanilang uh, local government uh, unit, no? ay lumapit sa IATF Sabihin sa IATF na maybe it's time to modify yung existing rule natin. Uh, dahil may, sa outdoor, dahil marami ng tao generally vaccinated with booster at uh, nakontrol na, na natin ang spread ng coronavirus. Or, uh, so yung pandemic, uh, more or less, parang medyo under control na. Guevara maintained that the IATF resolutions were backed by President Rodrigo Duterte's executive orders. And as president, he has a direct supervision on all local chief executives through the Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Okta Research Group recommends to keep the work-from-home scheme and hold off on-site work in some companies amid the slight increase of COVID-19 cases in the national capital region. However, a business group is not in favor of the said recommendation. Eileen Cerudo will tell us why. Presidential advisor and Go Negotia founder Joey Concepcion says restricting the movement of the public might affect the economy. We don't want to restrict mobility because mobility is what gives us economic activity. And uh, we just have to remain vigilant uh, to ensure that the hospital capacity remains extremely low. The presidential advisor explains the hospital utilization rate should be considered and not infection levels upon deciding whether to limit the movement of the public. He also reiterated the importance of boosting the vaccination rate in the country and antiviral medicines to prevent severe COVID-19 cases. That is the way that the world is thinking. Eh? Hospital capacity, not infection levels. Eh? Must be too much in 1,000, 2,000 cases a day. Pero ang those who are getting sick are just staying at home at medyo mild lang. And we have the antiviral pills, yung molnupiravir, yung paxlovid, nandito na sa bansa natin. So that is helping. Based on the data of Okta Research Group, the seven-day average cases in the national capital region increased from 86 cases to 131 cases. The group also warns cases might reach 450 to 500 by the end of the month. The research group recommended to hold off on-site work in some companies for workers to be protected against the virus. This would also help amid the rising fuel prices and fair hikes. Yung sa um, flexi work schedule, uh, I agree na siguro baka pwedeng i-hold off muna na yung pagbabalik ng mga tao sa work from home schedule. Ang um, nabalitan ko kasi sa June 15, marami mga work from home sa offices ay babalik na sa um, you know, on-site um, yung uh, work. However, Concepcion emphasized the importance of monitoring the increased prices of basic commodities and services due to the Ukraine-Russia crisis. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. And for the news abroad, 
Hong Kong has expanded its pandemic stimulus program to include foreigners for the first time. Nerisa Dando will tell us why live. Yes, Nerisa. Good evening, Marielle. Hong Kong, Dab Asia's world city, has lost its national appeal due to high living costs and political turmoil. According to local lawmaker Wendy Hong Wen, various industries are suffering and Hong Kong needs talents urgently while the city is under post-pandemic reconstruction. In 2021, Hong Kong faced its largest population decrease in six decades when 89,200 people left the city. In a desperate move to retain talents, non-permanent residents and international students will be eligible to receive 5,000 Hong Kong dollars from the city in August. However, the government excludes people planning to immigrate and domestic helpers from the additional upcoming payments. Approximately 6.3 million people in Hong Kong received the most recent stimulus round in April, which was previously limited to permanent residents. Since the emergence of COVID-19, this will be the fourth direct stimulus payment to Hong Kong residents. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Nerisa Dando, for that live report. South Africa, having been devastated by the highest number of COVID-19 cases and deaths recorded on the African continent, will receive funding from the World Bank amounting to 454.4 million euros or 474.4 million dollars, according to the bank and South Africa's national treasury. This is in response to South Africa's struggles in the past to secure enough COVID-19 vaccines, including the government's efforts to cut debt service costs for cheaper funding sources, the Director General of Treasury Ismail Momoniat said. Vaccination campaign has slowed in the recent months. Among its adult population of around 40 million, just over 50% received at least one vaccine dose. The approved loan will finance the procurement of 47 million COVID-19 vaccine doses by the government of South Africa. Group of seven NATO leaders show their support in Sweden and Finland, joining the alliance while Turkey has voted against it. Paul Gatalian will tell us why live. Yes, Paul, go ahead. Marielle, the announcement comes after the gathering of the seven NATO leaders on Tuesday came to the agreement that Sweden and Finland will further strengthen the alliance Leaders include the Prime Ministers of the Netherlands, Denmark, Belgium, Poland, Portugal, and Latvia, and the President of Romania. On the other hand, Turkey expressed its disapproval against the two countries. According to the country's MP for Justice and Development, both countries are in support of Kurdish militants Turkey deems as terrorists. NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg in his address voiced the same support but also acknowledge Turkey's concern against terrorism. At the same time, we have to take seriously uh, those concerns that are raised by uh, President Erdogan because actually Turkey faces some serious uh, 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 terrorist threats. There is no other NATO ally that has suffered more terrorist attacks than Turkey. Stoltenberg added that consultation with the NATO leaders about these concerns is the way forward. Sweden, in the resolution of the conflict, already expressed support in addressing Turkey's concerns. In addition to his address, Stoltenberg also confirmed NATO's assisting Ukraine with more weaponry in its battle against Russia. A Brussels meeting will be held this week in light of Ukraine's assistance, with the NATO summit set to be held on June 29 to 30. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Paul Gachalian, reporting live. Meanwhile, a new bill has been released in Canada requiring businesses and other private sector organizations to report ransomware and other attacks. Bianca Quijano will tell us why. 
businesses and private sector groups fall victim to cyber attacks, the Canadian government responded with a bill requiring the victims to report the ransomware incidents. With Bill C-26, an act respecting cybersecurity, amending the Telecommunication Act and making consequential amendments to other acts, the government intends to protect critical infrastructures from cyber attacks caused by giant Chinese technology vendors, such as Huawei Technologies and ZTE. The latter will be scrapped from Canada's next-generation mobile networks, the government announced recently. Cyber attacks on technologies is not the only concern of the Canadian government, but it is also fortifying its infrastructure in the telecommunications, finance, energy and transport sectors, with the goal of solidifying its defense on national security. Ransomware attacks are now a common occurrence in Canada, as many companies, universities, as well as hospitals continue to experience payment demands from cyber criminals at an alarming rate. One important aspect of the new bill applies to the Telecommunications Act, which allows the government to stop users from procuring equipment and services from certain suppliers that are known to be involved in cyber attacks. All victims of ransomware and other cyber attacks are required to report such occurrences in order to identify the services and technologies causing these despicable crimes. Bianca Quijano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Latoza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. Prices of some basic agricultural commodities in Metro Manila wet markets are now also affected by the series of oil price hikes. J.P. Nunez will tell us why. Market vendors in Balintawak Market are reeling the effects of high oil prices to the prices of vegetables from Baguio City. Ang tumas pong mga gulay ngayon ay mga gulay Baguio kasi dati mababa. Ngayon matas po siya sa transportation sa langis. As of June 15, prices of pechay bagyo rose to 70 pesos from 40 pesos per kilo. String beans is now ranging from 90 to 100 pesos per kilo from the previous 60 pesos, while chayote increased to 10 pesos from the previous 25 pesos per kilo. Meat prices are also increasing. The price of pork in Munoz market now ranges from 320 pesos to 360 pesos per kilo, which increased to 60 pesos from the previous months. Kasi tumaas daw yung gasolina, tsaka yung mga transportation, tumataas din. Ganun lang, hindi naman natin mapipigilan kung bakit sila nagtataas. Kaya nagtataas din kami ng presyo. Kailangan talaga sila kasi lugi naman po kami, may pinakasahod pa. The supplies of chicken were also the same. It increased 20 pesos from the previous weeks. Ay naku, sa ngayon talagang mataas ang presyo ng manu. Sobrang taas. Hirap nga kami magbenta ngayon kasi minsan tatanong ang customer, sabi mo palang na 200, naalisan ka na. Minsan may kita ka, madalas lugi. Hindi ka naman pwedeng mag-stop kasi yung pwesto namin, kahit may tinda ka at wala, may bayad. The price of milk fish also increased to 10 pesos per kilo from the previous 180 pesos, while tilapia and round scud stays at 120 pesos and 200 pesos per kilo. Consumers are now adjusting their budget to purchase the supplies they need. Yung mura lang po, yung talong, ganyan, yung mga sitaw, yung mga, yung kaya lang po sa budget. Yung lang po ang binibili ko. Uh, Kadalas sa binibili namin sa ngayon, uh, tumataas din yung kuha ng manok, uh, isda, pero sa ngayon, sa video sa gulay muna kasi medyo kaya-kaya po sa budget. Tapos, para makatipid, uh, luto, magluto lang ng tama. Yung kaila natin ubusin para wala tayong masayang na pagkain kasi simple sa mahal ang mabilihin sa atin ngayon. Mahirap din kita yung pera. The Department of Trade and Industry says it continuously monitor prices of basic necessities and prime commodities and ask the public to report overpricing. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
A group of truckers appeals to their clients for another freight fee increase this year. The Confederation of Truckers Association of the Philippines says truckers may no longer sustain their operation if clients will not heed their call for the adjustment. Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why. The continuous fuel price hike has been significantly affecting the revenue of truckers. The Confederation of Truckers Association of the Philippines says they initially appealed for a 30% rate increase for freight hike to importers and exporters. This is after the series of oil price increase in January this year. CETA President Maria Zapata, however, explains that truckers only received partial adjustment from the appeal. But with another series of big-time hike in the prices of petroleum products, the group appeals anew for an increase to their clients. We were alarmed already by the situation na baka hindi na makaya ng tracker if ever hindi ka mag-request ulit ng panibagong rate increase or fuel adjustment rate on the current rate that we are enjoying. Zapata further says the truckers have already been negotiating the new rate adjustment to their respective clients. She added that some of their clients have already increased the rate while others understand their situation and ask for a short period of consultations. This is not just a request. It is an appeal for you to understand the situation of your partner truckers. CTAP and three more groups of truckers are scheduled to meet tomorrow to discuss the situation and further actions on their part. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Our Kasang Bahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of Members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with a word giving glory to God from the book of Psalms, chapter 34, verse 7. It says, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. And those are the reasons behind the news. June 15, 2022, reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo, and because we need to know, we will always ask why. We serve the people, we give glory to God.